good morning welcome to the today session of computer organization and architecture and today we will be starting with the next module so that is module 3 and it is about input output organization so we have already discussed the basic input output operation in the previous module itself and uh, now in this module we will be discussing in detail about the io techniques okay that i have mentioned all already and if you consider the computer uh, the basic feature of the computer is its ability to communicate with the other devices which are connected to it so if you consider the human operator because of this ability okay what we have uh, with a computer system so using that ability of communicating with the other devices human can interact with the computer and he can process the text or the graphics okay depending on the applications and uh, if you consider the usage of the computer we mainly use the computers to communicate with the other computers so using the internet over the internet we communicate with the other computers and we use to access the data globally using the computer system and uh, if you consider the applications okay in some applications so we will be having the computer okay which is involved directly but in some applications so like uh, the home if you consider the applications such as home appliances okay manufacturing units etc in such applications so the computer is less visible but the input which will be accepted okay to the computer is uh, an input from the sensor okay or it may be some okay the input from the microphone like that the input can be given to the computer and the output may be a signal which is used to control the uh, movement of a robot or it can be to control the wall opening and closing of a wall etc so like this we will be having certain applications wherein the computer is less visible but uh, we can observe that the operation okay is carried through the computer by using the input and the output signals okay and now in this class we will be learning about so how to access okay the input first we will be learning about the accessing of the input device input output device and then we will be discussing the hardware okay which is required to connect the input output device okay that is the interface circuit we will see okay later and now uh, let us consider the accessing of the input or output device If you consider the accessing of I.O. devices, so in order to understand this, okay, let me consider a simple uh, the interface between the processor, memory, input, output, or you can consider the simple interconnection, okay, between the processor, memory, input, and output devices, okay. Yes, so let me consider the processor and let me consider memory. and let us assume there are IO device okay n number of IO devices let me consider this as IO device 1 and let me consider this as IO device 2 okay like this let us assume there are n number of IO devices okay yes so this is bus so this is a single bus structure of interconnecting the peripherals to the processor and the memory and if you consider such an arrangement so we have already okay discussed about the performance so if you consider the performance processor okay that is if you consider the speed um, as a performance factor we know that processor executes millions of instructions per second and we know that memory is also a very fast device okay compared to the io devices and if you consider the io devices we know that keyboard mouse are uh, slow compared to the output devices like printer or display so if you consider keyboard itself we know that it is restricted by the number of characters that can be pressed okay per second by the user and we know that only few characters can be pressed and that can be given as input and on the other side if you consider the output device 
So we know that, so if you consider a printer, it can print thousands of lines per second. Therefore, if you observe the speed of operation, there is a huge difference in speed of operation of all these devices. So because of this difference, so there need to be a mechanism which synchronizes all these operations, okay? So in order to synchronize all these devices, so we are going to make use of the techniques which are classified as or which are categorized as IO techniques and those are program control IO and the second technique is interrupt driven Okay, the third one is direct memory access. These are the three IO techniques we have, okay, in order to facilitate the communication between the processor, memory and the IO devices. If you consider the the data transfer, so that is the input output device. So whenever they transfer the data, okay, so to or from the memory, so here the actual communication happens between the memory and the IO devices, not, okay, from the IO devices to processor and then to the memory. So processor just, okay, coordinates the communication, okay, between the IO devices and the memory, but actually communication occurs between the memory and IO device. Whenever a key is pressed or whenever an input is given, okay, it will be stored in the memory location, okay, in one of the memory location in a memory and whenever that is to be uh, given to the output, then it is read from the memory to the output device. So because of this, so you can observe that, so we have the data transfer that occurs actually between IO and memory not okay with the processor but processor involvement will be there so that the coordination that is uh, the IO transfer between the memory and IO devices occur properly. Yes, if you consider the three techniques what we have for IO okay transfer so we have the first technique as program controlled IO. So I said in order to achieve the synchronization, okay, we are going to have these three, okay, techniques as IO techniques. So program controlled IO is going to achieve the synchronization by making the processor to wait until the IO devices are ready. So if we consider the input side, if the input is ready, okay, then it is going to indicate the processor through a status flag which will be there in the input circuitry and through that the processor will get a signal that the input is input device is ready to give a character then it is going to accept that and then it is going to store it in memory and on the other side so output so if you consider the output device there will be another status flag which will indicate whether the output device is ready to accept the character so by inspecting that status register the output okay device so indicate that the process indicate the processor that so it is ready to accept the character so depending on these status register contents the processor will be keep on okay inspecting this status register and depending on these register values so the corresponding action will be performed so in program controlled IO the processor will execute a program so wherein there will be a certain instructions so which will read the character from the input device and there will be certain instructions which will copy the contents of memory to the output device. So this is how the synchronization is achieved okay, by making the processor to wait until the IO operations are performed in program control IO. And the next technique is interrupted driven. So in this the synchronization is achieved by raising an interrupt. So whenever the IO device is ready, okay, it is going to interrupt the execution process of the processor and then so it is going to give the data which is to be given and on the other side, so whenever the output uh, device is ready, it is going to interrupt the processor execution and it is going to okay, accept the data from the 
processor or the, from the memory okay it is going to accept the data from the memory so this is how the operation happens in interrupt driven io and lastly we have direct memory access so in the first two cases there is an involvement of the processor and in the third case that is direct memory access the device circuitry in the device interfacing circuitry of the io devices will be directly okay transferring the data to and from the memory there is there is no involvement of the processor so here the direct memory access will not be involved with in the processor so this will be used in high speed operations so high speed devices we are going to use the direct memory access technique so this is about the io techniques that are there okay for accessing the io devices so other than this so what are the other okay basics we need to have so before learning so actually how the hardware circuitry is okay going to establish the communication between the io devices and the memory through the processor okay we need to know about the another important concept that is about the addresses that are assigned to the input output devices so if you consider the addresses okay which are assigned to the input output devices there are two ways of assigning the address okay in order to understand that let me consider the okay processor let it be 8085 processor and it is a 16 bit processor therefore you will be having 16 bit address lines and let us assume here we have a io device okay and let us consider so this is io address space and let us assume it is 8 bit okay address lines are dedicated to io address space so since there are they are 8 bit so it starts from 00, 00 h to F F H, so H indicates it is hexadecimal number, and here it is since we have 16 bit, so 0000, 0, 0, 0 H to F F F F H. So if we consider such an arrangement, okay, if you are treating this I O device as a separate entity, and if you are assigning separate address, okay, if you are mapping this to the address space, okay, which is dedicated to this I O device, then we call it as I O mapped io or you can call it as isolated io if you map this iso io device into the address space okay that is the memory whatever we have so to this then it is called as memory mapped io so the difference is in this case okay we are treating this io device as a um, separate okay quantity and we are assigning addresses so separately to the io devices so we are calling it as io mapped okay io whereas so in this case we have the addresses of io device so which are treated as the normal memory locations and here we are mapping it to the memory locations what we have this that is the address space what we have for the memory so this is called as memory mapped io so the difference between these two is if you consider the io mapped io in this case there will be two address spaces so one for the normal memory okay operations and other for the io operations so whereas in this you will be having single address space so for both memory related operations as well as io related operations okay and if you consider the io mapped io in this you will be having separate okay instructions for the io operations and separate instructions for memory operations and so if you consider the instructions like in out okay these will be used for io operations or if you consider the commands okay io r I O W, so okay, I O write, I O uh, read will be used for the I O operations. So, whereas 
the instructions like move, load, etc. will be used for the memory operations. Okay. So, and here it will be memory write, memory read. So, these are the okay control signals we will be having with respect to the memory operations. But whereas in this case, so since we are treating both as same, so you will be not having any separate instructions for uh, the IO operations or the memory operations. And in this case, the instructions, so which we use for the data transfer so that is we have discussed already about these instructions uh, move load store etc these are used for both io as well as memory data transfers okay and in this case you will not be having separate read or write signals you will be having okay wr and read okay add rd okay read and write signals so wr and rd as the control signals so this is about the memory mapped io and io mapped io uh, but if you consider most of the computers they will be okay having memory mapped io because it will be having uh, easy software so because of that reason so most of the computers will okay opt memory mapped io okay instead of io mapped io and uh, if you consider the control signals, okay, so the control signals, as I said, so I have indicated IOR, IOW, MW, okay, MR. So these will not be having, okay, physically separated lines. This will not be having physically separated, even though I have indicated, okay, this as four commands. So you will be having read or write, but whether it is IO operation or not, that will be indicated by a special signal, so which will be there on the bus, okay. So a signal will be there which will differentiate. So that from the memory or IO operation. So if it is the IO related operation, then the memory unit is going to just ignore the read or write operation. So if it is a um, memory re related operation, then the IO unit will uh, neglect the read or write operation. So these are not physically separated lines. Okay. So this is about the memory map IO and IO map IO. And now let us okay assume. So we have the memory mapped IO architecture, and then we will discuss. So the next code or next discussion will be considering the memory mapped IO as the reference. Okay. Yes. So now. After learning about the accessing the I.O. devices, next we need to learn about the interfacing circuitry which is used for interconnecting the I.O. devices okay, to the processor. So next we will learn okay, about the interfacing circuitry. Uh, next is interfacing circuitry. So let us see. So how the IO devices are connected, okay, uh, to the bus using the interfacing circuitry. So if you consider the bus, bus will be having three lines. So one is the address line, data line, and control line. Okay. So address line, or you can call it as, okay address bus, data bus and control bus and all together we call the group of wires as bus. So now if you consider the circuitry so we will be having address decoder Okay, then we will be having control circuitry. Next, so our address decoder, control circuitry and lastly we have data and status. Register. Yes. So, yes. 
yes so this is interfacing circuitry and to this IO devices are connected okay and these IO devices so can be a keyboard it can be a mouse it can be a printer it can be a display unit okay or it can be a external magnetic disk okay so all these external devices or peripheral devices are connected through the interfacing circuitry to the bus okay so if you observe we have three buses okay so the, those are address lines, data lines and control lines and if you observe the connection so address decoder is connected to the address line it is going to decode the address of a particular IO device and it is going to okay access that particular depending on the address which is assigned okay it is going to access the particular device and next we have data and status register which are connected to the data lines and we know that data and status register will be consisting of the data registers, the data in and data out and along with that we will be having status register, okay, wherein we will be having the S in and S out bits, so which are used to, okay, check whether the input is ready to accept, input is ready to, okay, give the data and output is ready to accept the data, okay, those information is, okay, stored in data and uh, data and status register and if you observe we have control circuitry which is required to coordinate all these operations so this is about the interfacing circuitry and the io devices now if you consider a very simple okay uh, application wherein we are supposed to enter a character through a keyboard and accept the character at the output end which is a display unit so whenever we press so that has to be echoed on the display unit in that case so let us understand so how the operation occurs so that we have discussed in detail okay already again we will be considering the same example so that you can understand in a better way so if we consider such an application so the keyboard here we have as an input device so the keyboard is going to uh, okay give the input and it will be ready in the data in register and whenever the character or the ASCII code for the character is ready in the data in register so the SIN flag will be made as high so by inspecting the SIN flag the processor gets the information that there is a valid character in the data in so S in if it is high processor is going to read the character which is present in the data in and it is going to store that character in uh, memory location okay and then so if I want to print that character or if I want to display that character on a screen so then the S out okay the status register S out which is present in the status register okay so will be made as high that bit will be made as high and it is the processor is going to examine that bit if that bit is made as high then it indicates that the output device is ready to accept the character therefore the processor is going to copy the character from the memory to the data out register so which is present okay in the output device and so it is going to display that particular character so this we have discussed in detail in the previous module also so this is how the operation of accepting an input and uh, the producing an output happens in a computer system so now let us consider the same okay code segment so that we have already seen so, so which accepts a line of character and which is going to display that on the display screen and let us understand what are all the registers that are involved so there actually we have assumed that there is a separate data in okay 
there is a separate yes in and yes out so which will be present in in status and out status registers but so in this case you will be having only one status register wherein you will be having one bit as yes in the other bit as yes out and the status register will contain so other bits so which will be useful for the io operations okay and now we will see all the registers that are involved and then we will see a code segment okay in order to understand so how uh, the accepting a line of character hap line of characters okay happens and how it is going to be echoed on the display screen okay yes so now let me consider the code okay so example code i am considering now and before that as i said let us consider the registers which are involved data in data out then so status register okay So eight bit register, you will be having S in, S out, D I R Q, K I R Q. Okay, and let me give the bit numbers: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So similar to this, you will be having control register. Okay, which is of eight bit. and you will be having den and ken okay let us see uh, what are this dirq kirq den and ken later and now in our program we will be making use of sin and s out okay s in and s out uh, if you consider these so this will be used when we consider the interrupts so that is the second technique what we have for io so with that technique okay we will understand what are this okay the bits what we have dirq kirq den and ken so now as i said we will be using the two bits which are the last two bits of the status register and if you consider the code okay move let us okay move the starting address of the first character to be okay stored in uh, to the register or not so we have ash loc so that is the memory okay address so which is given to r not so that the first character is okay stored in r not and next let me call this as weight k okay accepting the input from the keyboard let it be weight k so now what is the first instruction so what okay the processor has to do so the processor has to check the bit test bit so in this case it is zeroth bit of the status register so in the previous case we assume that the third bit contains about the information about s in 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 status whereas in this since we have the the s in in zeroth position of status register you need to check for okay the bit zero of the status so branch if it is equal to zero to wait k so if the input device is not ready okay branch to wait so if it is ready then move the contents of okay are not or sorry move the contents of data in into r not okay to r not because so we are supposed to store the data in in the memory location that is contained by r not therefore i am using the indirect addressing mode so this is the code okay so to accept the input character now if i want to display let me write it as so wait display okay so test bit 
so which bit has to be tested now it has to test the first bit so th this is a, a zeroth bit this is first bit if you want to call it this is first and second but so whenever we give okay the bit positions we start from 0 0 to 7 okay and since we have given the number as 0 1 2 etc i am testing the okay first bit of the status register okay to check whether the output device is ready or not and if the output status register is not ready then it has to wait then it has to wait okay it has to execute this and if it is ready then it has to move the contents of r naught into the data out okay so now this code whatever i have written so this is sufficient if you are transferring single character but i said so we are considering a program for a line of characters in that case so we are going to okay increment the value of r naught so that it points to the next memory location and then along with that so you since okay we have a line of character we need to check for the end of the line so how to check the end of the line so we are going to check for the carriage return value so carriage return indicates so whether the line is ending or not so it indicates whether it is the end of the line or not so in order to check the end of the line we are going to make use of the carriage return okay and the value for that is 0d okay 0d in hexadecimal therefore we are going to compare we are going to compare hash okay dollar symbol is used to okay give the number in hexadecimal so 0d and increment this r not so if it is true okay branch if it is false okay so if it is false it is if it is if the character is not the end of the character okay uh, if the character is not end of the line then it is going to branch to wait k so that it can accept the next character which is to be displayed so if it is the end of the string then it has to okay move to the next line So it has to move to the next line so if you move okay hash 0 a h into the data in the cursor is going to jump to the next line okay and after this so you can call a subroutine so called as process which processes the given input line okay so this is the core segment we have in order to okay um, execute uh, program wherein it is going to accept a line of characters and it is going to echo it on the display screen and if you want to process okay if you want to perform some action on the accepted line then that can be done by calling a process so process is a subroutine okay so this is the code segment for the example what we considered so here if you observe so it is uh, moving the hash 0a to the data out so data out okay we'll accept this so it indicates the processor that it has to go to the next line okay so earlier it was i had written it as data in so this is data out okay so with this so we will be okay concluding the basics so which are required to understand the input output organization and next in the next class we will be discussing about the next io technique that is interrupts so first we will be discussing about the interrupts and then we will be discussing about interrupt driven io okay thank you